Welcome everyone. This is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about stress and anxiety. If you are living and you are alive, you have some level of stress in your life. Now that stress might not be something that is a big stress right now, but it could be building its way up to it. And so what we have to understand is that our stress must be managed. If we are not managing our stress, then what's going to happen is eventually we're going to be burned out. We're going to have a lot of issues later on in our life, and we're going to struggle to get out of that stress. Now, I use the word manage loosely because managing is almost like, oh, I'm just going to put a Band-Aid on it. Okay, I'm stopping the bleeding, but I'm not fixing the root cause. But today, I want to get into some of the root causes that are causing us to be so stressed, so anxious, and so overwhelmed in our life. We can make a difference with our stress, with our anxiety, and learning how to repair ourselves, the daily actions we do, so we're not having to always be in a habitual habit of managing our stress. We can be healed from it. As I said, if you're listening to this, you have some levels of stress within you. Everyone does. It's natural. Anxiety is the same. We might have stress for bills. We might have stress for family, relationships, career. It doesn't necessarily matter what type of stress you're going through. We can't necessarily say that if you have career stress, it's going to be greater than family stress or vice versa or to any category because what stress is, is unique to you. Most people will just throw it away until it becomes too much to handle. And that is where we're going, right? Too many people have this baggage of stress and they're living with it. Today, we're going to be bringing on a guest coach who's going to be helping us understand that we can manage our stress and our burnout and our anxiety so much more effectively. Tess Jewel Larson, she's going to be spending some time with us in a moment, and she's going to be helping us get rid of stress for good. So here's that interview with Tess and myself. Welcome, Tess Jewel Larson, to Coaching in Session. How are you doing today? I am so good. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited to be here. Of course, and I'm excited to have you on because we're going to be talking about your work. You are a stress and a burnout coach. But that is not all you do. You help out in our society, our world so much. People are in need for your type of services because we are in a sense of burnout. We are living in a society that stress is running rampant. And there are ways that we can heal it to fix it, not just manage it. Some people think that stress management is going to be the way. But what you do is you help people get rid of stress for good. And that is what we need. We need more people to live a more stress-free life. Without me talking about your whole biography, please tell the world who you are, what you do, and how you help. Yeah. I work with people that are struggling with stress, burnout, anxiety, just overwhelm in general, feeling exhausted, and helping them find a more balanced life in their own body and just how they approach life in general. That comes with looking at a person in a really holistic way, so like noticing, okay, how are we maybe holding that stress in the body? Are there ways that we can start to release that stress in the physical body? Are there ways that we can, tools that we can build in through our day that we can stop and pause and, and start to kind of on a consistent basis, release that stress instead of just holding onto it. Because a lot of times our stress is kind of piled on top of stress, on top of stress and top of stress. And when this gets stuck in the body, it causes a lot of issues in the body from things like high blood pressure to chronic pain to issues like IBS, right? So like there's a lot of issues that can come from just constant stress in the body. And so work together to meet the my clients where they're at to, you know, start to take those steps to find a more balanced state and really thrive in the life that they're, they want to be living. And we do have to look at the inception of everything at the start. Where does this stress come from? Does it come from the need to fit in, maybe the peer acceptance from our teenhood and we just kind of bring it into our adulthood? Maybe it could be financial stress. I mean, it could be the gambit, but in your work, what do you see people are most stressed about and how 
they address that stress that they're stressed about? Oh, <laughs> I think that stress comes from lots of different things, right? It could be stress from work. It could be stress from home life. It could be a mixture of all of the above. It's always about helping the person start to notice, like, you know, be aware of where that stress is coming from. You know, it's one thing for me to say, oh, hey, you know, like, let's look at this. But it's another thing for them to really start to acknowledge it in their own life and see how it presents itself for them. And it's about bringing awareness into their every day, which a lot of us, when we're stressed, we're not aware. That stress, you know, often helps disconnects us from ourself. My whole goal is to help reconnect the person with them, their self and really, you know, start taking those small steps to, to really notice, okay, how am I feeling today? And what are little things that I can start to do for myself that really gives back to me and helps me release that tension, that dis-ease in, in the body and in the daily life. Looking at not just like what we're doing necessarily on a day-to-day -day basis, but, you know, how are we responding to that stress you know because we can't necessarily just get rid of the stress that we have in our life but it's how we approach those different stressful situations and um, maybe can we take a little moment to pause before we go into certain things that we know activate us so that we can go in and instead of reacting we're responding and then like you mentioned you know like there's certain things that can set us off you know maybe we have a limiting belief of some sort that is what is increasing that stress and so can we kind of go in and notice what is that limiting belief that we have? Can we start to reframe it? Can we start to talk to ourselves differently so that we show up for ourselves better? No, that's a valid point because limiting beliefs can create stress. If we are not showing up in our day, that stress is going to come whether we like it or not because the anxiety is going to be setting in too. And one of the things I wanted to ask you because you work with this so frequently with your clients is we have to look also at maybe... 20 years ago, we don't have to go back too far. Okay. 20 years ago, were people more stressed then or are they more stressed today? Or do people just don't know how to approach not being stressed and having a stress free life? I think a lot of it comes from being stimulated all the time. 20 years ago, we didn't, we weren't always on devices all the time. We still had time to kind of decompress and release and not constantly be on. And being stimulated all the time doesn't allow our brain to relax, right? Like it's like constantly going. And, you know, one of the things that I really suggest to people is, you know, start to limit their screen time, <laughs> start to limit the amount of time that they have on their devices and just have that, those act, I call them active rest moments. So just allowing the brain to rest and you're actively doing it. So you're like putting away your phone, you're putting away the book, you're putting away the the screen, you're putting away the music and you're just allowing yourself to be in the moment. And that can be very uncomfortable especially when we're so used to being stimulated all the time. So, you know, doing it in small doses, the beginning is important, not just like diving straight in, and, you know, and doing things that help you focus as well. So keeping that focus during those times um, to help you feel, you know, comfortable in that. I remember seeing at one point, there was some study that was done that like people were getting paid to, you know, if they went into a room and didn't do anything for an hour, then they would get so much money and like, so like a good portion, I don't remember the the actual like statistic of it, but like a good portion of the people couldn't last the hour. They're like, no, no. And they left and they, they walked out and they didn't get their money. You know, and it was just like, wow, like we have to be stimulated all the time that we, for an amount of money, we can't even just sit with our own thoughts for a while. And there's, there's a lot of studies that show that having that rest time actually helps us be more creative. It helps us feel more focused. It's not always easy to do, especially because we are stimulated all the time. But that is one thing that I would say that that probably increases our stress levels because we we're not allowing ourselves just to be. And over the years, looking back 50 years ago, we had TVs and maybe not as much cell phone usage, but people were addicted to reading the newspaper. So it's almost like as a culture, we are addicted to information. Do you find that to be that people just want to consume as much information, be it good or bad? Probably people want information. People want to be entertained, right? Like I would say, you know, as a human race, we're very good at like creating things that entertain us, you know, whether that's books, whether that's listening to like, you know, the radio, you know, all those radio shows that they had back then. You know, we have podcasts now, right? 
But instead of having like a TV show, you had this radio show, so you were listening to it, but you were still using your imagination. I think that there's a little difference between reading a book and listening to like a story, then actually watching it happen in front of you because you're not having to imagine anything. It's literally there. I think that that difference as well, like, yes, we want that information. We want that entertainment, but maybe taking the time to just allow our imagination to run a little bit more, be, you know, be a kid again. You know, like, and I think that that, I don't know, it'd be, it'll be interesting to see the, the younger generation coming up, right? And noticing like how, because they're on more often than we ever were as kids, at least me. Like I didn't have, you know, the constant stimulation that they did. Like I went out and played outside loads and I grew up on a farm, you know? So like <laughs> we weren't allowed on the TV until at certain times of the day, you know? And it was only a family thing. It wasn't, actually I was talking about this with a friend earlier. It was only a family thing. Like it wasn't like a, oh, just go watch some cartoons. Oh, you're going to watch it. Like you're going to watch it with your brothers. You're not going to watch it at all. Or we're going to watch it as a family or we're not going to watch it at all. You know, it's just a very different as well, I think, for our generation and then for this new generation coming up when they're always on their phones. They're always like, I have a niece and she's 10 and she already has a phone. She has WhatsApp, you know, like, and she's talking with her friends. And I'm just like, what? Like, we had to like, you, your mom would get on the other line and be like, get off the phone. <laughs> That's how it was. We had uh, dial up AOL. If you remember that, we grew up in prehistoric times almost compared to the children growing up today. We had a conversation similar to this one on our Group 4 episode. We talked about screen time in children and how it stops them from taking proactive action toward uh, their potential self-improvement betterment. And what that typically tends to do to the mind is it makes it almost insatiable. It's like they need that fix. They're addicted to it. They're addicted to the social media. They're addicted to technology, to the TV shows. Every kid has their own individual iPad at their house. They probably have their own TV in their room. And now kids as young as 10, maybe even before, I think when I was a teacher, I think the youngest child that I saw who had a phone, this was in 2014 or 15, I think, she was seven. And all the teachers I remember saying, can you believe she has a cell phone? And everyone was just like, I can't believe this because the teacher was a little bit older and they were. Uh, saying, I didn't get a cell phone until I was like 30. And the times are changing so rapidly. But what needs to happen is not so much of us looking at this as an issue, I believe, but to look at it in a sense that let's manage what's happening because technology is a useful tool, right? I can connect with you. You're across the states and it's just like, all right, we can come together. We can make something amazing. That wouldn't happen if technology wasn't there. Our message would probably not be able to be sent out to hundreds of thousands of people because of the lack of technology. What technology is here, right? We have it. We should utilize it. And we don't want to do a disservice to our children by saying, no technology, no screen time for you, because it's going to give them a more difficult time to put themselves ahead in the world of technology, because when they go into their career later on in life, if they're not tech savvy to some degree or technologically literate, let's call it that, you don't have to read books, but you do have to write code maybe in the next 20 years. We're shifting from what people need to do or what need to know. But what's happening with the older generation is they're learning this technology now when they didn't need it growing up. So they're sacrificing their imagination, their individuality, and they're starting to become more entwined with what society is kind of giving them. Oh, you have to have this type of refrigerator. You have to have this type of phone. You see all the ads. And so we're so corralled and told that we have to have this certain type of lifestyle. Do you think that as someone who's in a different generation, and I have a blog coming out in a couple of weeks talking about generational mindsets. If we stick in our generation, for example, I'm I'm a millennial, I believe. If I was a millennial, or if I am a millennial, or I think I am a millennial, if I stayed in that mindset and we have a very particular mindset as millennials, we are very focused on growth and potential. That's just our personality. And we use technology here and there, but 
I have found the millennials who dive deep into technology, the same way Generation Alpha, Generation Alpha is our current generation right now, they find themselves so much more stressed out. Do you find a correlation in that in your work? Yeah, I would say that that makes sense, right? Because we didn't grow up with kind of compartmentalizing that and like saying, okay, this is time for this, this is time for that. And like you said, we developed in a different way. So we were stimulated in different ways. And now that we have this technology, maybe we're not able to kind of separate the two, whereas the younger generation is because they've always had it, right? And so that that makes sense to me. You know, I generally work with people that are millennials and older, so sort of within that sphere. And that's how that's most of who I work with and an older generation as well, like where they didn't have any of that until much later. And I think that it is easy to get sort of addicted to it, that constant stimulation, having times. And once again, it's like, it's not exactly that we shouldn't not use it, but it's just knowing, okay, let's like, before you go to bed, put your phone away for an hour. The blue light of the screen is stimulates that same response in our body as the blue light from the sun. So it wakes us up. Then if you're looking at your screen right before bed and then you try to go to bed, like your body's gonna be like, no, but you just stimulated me. Like I'm supposed to be waking up now. I'm not supposed to be going to sleep. So just knowing how we're using it, when we're using it and being aware of those things. And so that, you know, we're using it in a beneficial way and we're not using it in a way that's gonna mess us up for other things that we wanna be doing, like sleeping. (laughs) <laughs> People definitely sacrifice sleep to be on their phones. If they find themselves awake at one o'clock in the morning, the first thing they do is go to their phones. And that could be maybe the worst thing that they could do. What I would recommend if you can't sleep, again, this is more mindset than probably the stress work. We're definitely going to get into that in just a moment. But I would just say, if you can't sleep, get up and start to do something productive. If you have to clean something, tidy up something, if you have some paperwork, get it done. You might think that you are going to get too stimulated. You can't go back to sleep. Let me tell you a secret. You already can't sleep. So if you're already on your phone for two or three hours, you might as well get off your phone and be more productive. But again, that's just a little mindset trick. But I do want to get into how can people start to get rid of some of their stress, right? So let's say we have a full suitcase and and we're going to Mexico together and our baggage is, is going to be stress, literally 50 pounds of stress. Because if it's over 50 pounds, we're going to have to pay an overage and that's like $128. No one wants to do that. So they keep just the right amount of stress in their life, 50 pounds. That's what they know they can handle, but they keep it at capacity. How can we let people know or help people unpack that stress and say, do you really need this on your trip to Mexico? Because most likely if you pack 50 pounds of stuff on your check bag, we could probably take out 15 pounds of that. You don't need that. You don't need 50 pairs of shoes. You don't need all these t-shirts. You're going to be on the beach all the time. Getting into that type of mindset, how can we unpack the stress we don't need? I think it goes back to awareness. First, it's noticing, like you're saying, how much stress are you holding on? Like how much stress are you, do you have in your body? And then like taking those times on a periodic basis throughout the day of just pausing and allowing, maybe allowing whatever emotions are coming up, allowing any sensations in the body and taking that time to ground, to bring yourself back into the present moment and just notice, okay, how can... For example, a grounding technique would be like being aware of what you can see around you. So noticing what you can see around you, maybe noticing the textures, the colors, and then what can you hear? What are are there sounds in the distance? Are there sounds close by? Can you hear the sound of your own breath? For example, can you, what can you touch? What can you feel, right? Can you feel your, maybe if you're in a chair and you're in a meeting, for example, and you're feeling that stress rising, like, can you feel your body sitting on the chair? Can you feel the ground under your feet? Can you feel maybe your hair brushing your face? What can you smell? Or is there any sense in the room? Is there any flavor in the mouth? And if there's none of, you know, if one of these senses doesn't work for you, fine, like skip it, right? It's all about meeting each person where they're at. But then like when you come back into that present moment, our stress doesn't exist. Our anxiety doesn't exist. Our, that is in the past. That's in the future, right? When you're in the present, it's not there. So when we're able to come back fully to the present, we're able to start unwrapping and de-selecting some of those stress items in our suitcase. Do you think that stress is brought on because of a certain time of day or because of a certain prompt. For example, 
I might wake up in the morning and I feel extremely stressed. Maybe it's financial stress. Okay. So I just wake up. Maybe it's one of the things that I'm just worried about. And I'm just like, I can't do anything because I feel like this burden of financial stress is weighing me down. I don't want to wake up. I don't want to start my day. But then we have a prompt of stress. Maybe like you said, maybe you're sitting in the office chair and you're getting ready to do a presentation. That right there, the prompt is saying, okay, you could be stressed now. Some stress can be good, of course, right? The anxiety is like, okay, you know, this is getting me ready. But sometimes stress can be elevated to levels that are just unhealthy. And I'm sure you're well aware of good stress and bad stress and what levels of stress are manageable for the body. Uh, if we have time, we'll definitely talk about that. But I wanted to ask you that question. Is stress more of the time of day or because of the prompts in our day? I think it depends per person. Let's let's actually go. Let's talk a little bit about what you were saying with sort of, let's say, let's call it acute stress. So good stress and then like persistent stress. So the stress going on top of stress on top of stress, right? We're not releasing it. I think that that's a really important part to that question because if it's just a one small thing, it's in, it's out, then your body is, it's going to the stress mode, but then it releases it. And then it goes back to like more of a balanced state. But when we're constantly putting things on top, on top, on top, right, this is going to pull us down. This We're going to feel this physically in the, the tension in our muscles. We're going to feel it in the maybe more of a quicker breath or our heartbeat is going to be quicker, right? And that's going to affect us throughout the day longer. It depends because it depends on how much we're holding on to. It depends on what's happening around us. It depends on, are we taking those that time to release the stress or are we just packing it one on top of the other? And we're just kind of pushing it away and saying, oh, I'm just going to ignore that. Right. And the more that we kind of push that down. So someone said this at one point, and I just, I love the, the visualization. Like, you know, if you take your, your stress and it's like a basketball and you're pushing it underwater, right? Like you can do that for a little bit. And if you do it for a little bit and then let it come back up, then it's not too bad. But the more you're pushing that down, the harder it's going to be to keep it down. And then eventually you're not going to hold it, be able to hold it down anymore. And it's just going to launch up in the air and maybe it'll hit you in the face and maybe it'll hit someone else. Right. Like, you know, and, and it's just that really good visualization personally, because it's stress does we, you know, if we just have more and more and more of it, it's going to push down and then we're going to feel it at different times of the day. It's going to affect us in our sleep. It's going to affect us in the way that we present during the day. It's going to affect how we're responding to those other stressful events. If we're able to take that time periodically and just go, okay, let me pause, let me release it. You know, maybe you're doing a visualization of literally releasing that stress. Maybe you're writing things down and then letting them go that way. Maybe you are moving your body and just like shaking it out. Maybe you're taking that time just to put legs up the wall and allow the body to fully rest. You know, so there's there's different things that we can do to then help us respond to what is happening around us. And it we're not having that basketball be way too far down to have it fly up in our face. So it's I think it really depends on the person. It depends on how much tension and stress they're already holding in the body. And so that can show up at different times of the day. That can show up differently how we're responding to other stressful events in our lives. What's an unhealthy level of stress? And how would a person know that they have that unhealthy level of stress in their life? I would say an unhealthy level of stress, if you're noticing, for example, that you are not able to stop, like maybe your leg is constantly jiggling or your eye is twitching, or maybe you are, you know, just feeling really tight in the shoulders or clenching in the jaw, clenching jaws at night. That can be a, an example of stress, right? So your body is just holding everything in and the, the twitching of the leg, of the, the eye, right? That's because your body is trying to release the stress in some way. Stress can show up as show up as heart disease. It can show up as like some of our major diseases that we have today are caused by persistent stress, stress that we're not able to release. You know, there's all, obviously there's other things that go into it as well, but that is like a huge factor because what when we go into that stress mode, what happens is our body is a it's it's firing up to try to get us out, but it's also so the muscles are tensing, the cortisol is being released into the nervous system, and inflammation increases in the body. You're more likely to injure yourself. You're more likely to not get as if you get a cold to overcome it. So th there's lots of things that can come up, and so it is just sort of noticing like a 
are you having these little symptoms that you think, oh, they're not that big of a deal. I'm just tired. What maybe take a pause and notice, like, how often is this happening? When is it happening? Like, maybe there's something else that's going on there. Maybe is that chronic stress. And then also noticing, like, if you get sick, how long are you being sick for? Can you just come straight out of it? Or are you, it's like, there's that cold continuing for a really, really long time. Like, why isn't it going away? Right. I mean, like it all of, there's lots of different, every, it can show up in lots of different ways for different people because your body is trying to help itself as best as it can. So it's trying to release that tension. It's trying to, to do what it can to continue to push on in that stress mode but it's not always beneficial thing that happens and so when we can come into those moments and and allow that stress to be released then that's when we're coming back into that more balanced state and we're able to digest better we're able to digest our food we're able to digest the the situations that we're living the experience that we're living right we're able to heal better we're able to maintain a better sort of homeostasis within the body, that balanced state within the body. And it also shows up in our relationships. So like when you're stressed, you're probably going to be more negative about things and you're probably going to start taking that out on different people, right? Maybe you're taking out first on yourself, saying negative things to yourself because of whatever's happening that negativity builds up and then you start sharing, kind of start pushing it out on other people. So are you having those mood swings? That's another thing, you know, that can show up with stress. Are you like, I know in my case, (laughs) in the burnout, I I was very, very negative and I'm not a negative person. I'm a really happy go lucky person. And I was like, what's wrong with me? Like, why am I being so negative all the time? I don't understand. And it, it wasn't until much later when I realized like I was completely burning out that, oh, it's because of, you know, I was in so much stress all the time and I wasn't releasing it that I was taking it out on other people and I was being negative. And that just, that wasn't me. I was also not as creative, right? These stress levels cut down on our creativity. Why? Because our brain is trying to focus on getting us out of the situation, not thinking of all these beautiful things that that can happen. You know, it's, it's that's why it's so important to bring that awareness first, because then you start noticing what is coming up for you. Right. You start really paying attention of what is there. And with that, you can start to take those start like those little, little steps to start releasing and allowing and giving back to yourself. And I love the last part you said how the stress is keeping us too busy is keeping us occupied because we're so worried about trying to fix the stress, how to get rid of the stress. And we can't be our true amazing self because we're so occupied with the little things maybe, or the things that finally surmount it to everything. For example, your trash bin in your kitchen. If you throw away one thing, you don't have to take out the trash, but eventually over the day, you accumulate enough trash to take it out in the evening. Stress could be very similar to that because we might just do it so subtly, like, oh, a little stress here, a little bit more. And it finally adds up to a level. It's like, I need to take this trash out. And one of the sayings that people say quite frequently, like when they're in the health profession, especially like therapy, we do some in life coaching, mindset coaching, is take out the trash and is literally looking at your mind and seeing what needs to be taken out. Because some things we need to give our focus to, and some things we shouldn't be giving our focus to. And some things we try not to give our focus to, we try to avoid them. And I found the best way to go after the things that we try to avoid is to get someone in our corner, someone who can hold us accountable, someone who can figuratively hold our hand and guide us through it. Because If you have to clean up your whole entire house, it could be daunting if you have to do it by yourself. But if you have a team of people or just one person just helping you, it's so much more enjoyable. And that is why I love the work that you do, Tess. And it is important that people realize that they can have someone in their corner that can help them along this journey of life. Because if you're stressed, if you're overwhelmed, if you feel burdened to any degree, why not manage that today? So as we begin to wrap up, Tess, I would love for you to give us a final word and for you to tell the audience where they can find you. First off, thank you so much for having me. This has been wonderful. Hopefully people have been able to at least pick up one thing, but they're like, oh, that's going to be beneficial or, oh, I understand that. Uh, Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Look up Tess Jewel Larson. Uh, My name's pretty unique. I don't think anyone else out there has it. And then my website is www.titanyyoga.com. So that's T-Y-T-O-N-I yoga.com. And you can find out everything that I offer or just contact me and say hi. I like to chat with people too. Whatever you need, message me or see what I can offer you. There's lots of stuff on for free on the website and also on 
the Instagram and Facebook. Hopefully you get something that's beneficial and that helps you. And once again, thank you so much for having me. Of course. And first off, you said you hope people got a few things from it. I already know there's at least a couple of nuggets in here that people are going to take away. They, they probably had their notebooks filled and they're like, OK, I'm going to start to do this. I'm going to start to do that. And that's a great place to start. But I also encourage you to send Tess a message, whether it be on your favorite social media app, send her an email, reach out to her on, on her contact page on her website set up a call, consultation, discovery session, whatever it is, that right there can be the start of you just talking about what's going on in your life. Because when you talk about it, it's out, it's there for you to see it. And then you can ask yourself a true deep question. Do you want it back in? And most people, once they get it out, they don't want it back in. So if you are struggling with stress, if you're struggling with anxiety and you want to get rid of it for good, reach out to Tess today. We had a great conversation talking about her work. And I want to thank you, Tess, for coming on and being an amazing guest. All right, everyone, I'd like to thank you so much for watching that episode with Tess Jewel Larson and myself. As you can see, she has gone through the stress and she has come out of the stress. She talked about being a happy and cheerful person. I can tell from the moment we got on the call to the moment we ended the call that she is that uppity person. She loves to be happy. She loves to be joyful and she loves to spread that joy to others. And that is so important when you're working with a coach, especially in the realm of stress and anxiety. You want someone who can manage not only their stress, but your stress too, because as a coach, you almost take on a little bit of what the person is going through. And it's not so much that we fully understand your situation. I don't want you to believe that. I want you to understand that we are there with you in that situation because no person can truly understand what you are going through or how you're feeling. But what we can do is be there to support you in any which way you think you need, because you might just need someone to talk to. You might need someone to vent to. You might need someone to cry on. I mean, there's just so many options when it comes to a person helping another person. I have found the best way to get rid of stress is to simply start a conversation. Maybe a DM, maybe a tweet, maybe an email, just talking about what's going on. I can't tell you how many emails I get of people just asking me simple questions, but the questions are not simple to them. They're difficult. They're trying to make sure that they have their whole entire life set up. There could be situations that seem easy to one person, but to the person that's living it, it can be the heaviest thing in the world. As a coach, we want to help lift those heavy things that you're facing, that you're experiencing. And as I said, I believe Tess is going to be right down anyone's alley, especially if you are overwhelmed, if you're burnt out. If you have an unhealthy level of stress and your body's trying to tell you, it's warning you, and you're not listening, do me a favor. Listen to yourself today. Ask yourself a deep, meaningful question. Can I manage my stress? Am I living with too much stress? And if I am, how can I start to mitigate it? How can I start to get rid of it? How can I start to make sure that it doesn't come back habitually in my life? Because if you are going to just do the band-aid fixes of things, you're going to find that you're going to have more stress later on. Yes, it's alleviated for a moment. It's almost like taking a Tylenol or an Advil for the pain. But if you have a broken arm, the Tylenol and the Advil are going to wear off eventually. And the pain is going to reignite that feeling inside of you saying, either I need more drugs or I need to get healed. Today can be the opportunity for healing. Today can be the opportunity for you to make a change in your life. Because I even said it at the end of the interview, you have so much potential within you. And if you're too busy being stressed, how can you focus on the amazing part of you? My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, email me coachingincession at gmail.com. And I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching in Session. Until then, everyone take care.